Good morning. Awesome. So today, as far as ingredients to answer your question, Isa, we are making chewy granola bars today. And this is a really easy recipe that I make a lot at home. And it requires ingredients that are pretty easy to find for the most part. So, um, tools wise, we need a, a baking pan that we're gonna pat our granola bars into for shape. So I'm going to use, actually, I'm at Gualestan and all of my pans here are really big. So I'm gonna use this loaf pan because I think um, area wise, this is gonna be the right size, but you just need a, a pan you know, this kind of thing would work well. Something like this that you're gonna pat your granola bars into. Yeah, Issa, that looks perfect. That's exactly what you need. Um, ideally, an eight by eight, so eight inch by eight inch is the perfect size, but again, I don't have that, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like making Rice Krispies where if you have a bigger pan, they're just gonna be thinner, and if you have a smaller pan, they're gonna be thicker. But it, it works whatever size you have. Um, we're going to need a saucepan because today we're going to heat the nut butter and the maple syrup or honey over the stove. So we're going to need a saucepan. And then Isa, that also means that you'll need a parent around just to, I don't know how comfortable you are with the stove, but if you're trying to cook alone, um, you might want your parents to just be there to see you, make sure you're safe around the stove. Uh, a heat proof spatula, a spatula that we're going to use to stir the, um, the stuff on the stove. A medium bowl. Hi, Julia. Hi, Greta. Hi. It's good to see you. We're just going over what we need for the lesson today. Yeah. So we need um, a medium bowl. Next to one. Measuring cups and spoons. <laughs> Measuring, and then we need chocolate chips. What? Chocolate chips? Yep, I haven't done the ingredients yet. I've just done the tools. So I'll start with ingredients now. And I'm just muting everyone just because there's some background noise. But if you have a question, just um, unmute yourself and then ask. So. I've done tools, and Greta, you joined later, so if you need me to go over tools again, wave your hand in front of the screen. Do you guys know what tools you need, Greta? Yeah. You can not, because you're Yeah, here. you're good? Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, as far as ingredients, we're going to use um, nut butter of some kind. So I have sunflower seed butter here. And you could also use peanut butter or almond butter or, um, I don't know, cashew butter, any kind of nut butter. Um, but I'm using uh, sunflower seed butter because I'm going to share these with Nessa and Mitra, and Mitra's allergic to nuts. And also, I never use nuts in the Bolletan kitchen because of nut allergies. So I'm using sunflower seed butter, but I make them at home with peanut butter, and I really like that. You need um, maple syrup or honey. So I'm using maple syrup here, but you can also use honey. So one of those two things, just a sweet syrup. Coconut oil is what I'm gonna be using for an oil. I've also made this with olive oil before and that works too, but I like to use coconut oil. So some kind of oil, Coconut oil preferred, but any oil that you have will work. I think vegetable oil or or um, vegetable oil or olive oil would be just fine. Vanilla extract. So I have vanilla here. That's kind of optional too, but it's really yummy. So if you have it, I would add it. Vanilla, just vanilla. Just vanilla. Yep, vanilla is perfect. Um, sea salt or just salt, any kind of salt. And oats, oat, like oatmeal, oats. I'm using old fashioned oats, which is, um, yep, rolled oats, perfect. Those are great. 
whatever kind of oats you have will be fine. I've, I've done it with quick oats before, which are more processed and cook faster, and those work just fine, too. Um, so we got oats, and then here comes the fun part. You can add whatever you really want to your granola bars as far as nuts or seeds or coconut. I've done puffed quinoa before. I've done puffed rice before. Um, so you can add whatever you want, but any mixture of nuts and seeds. So I have chia seeds. I have sunflower seeds. I have pumpkin seeds. And I have coconut. I dropped the coconut. Sorry, guys, that was loud. But so I'm going to add probably a half a cup of coconut and then two tablespoons of each of these seeds. But whatever you have at home that you want to mix in is fine. You're going to want like about a one cup of mix-ins. And then um, chocolate chips. Lisa was asking about chocolate chips. I also like to add chocolate chips. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. So chocolate chips are optional as well, but I like chocolate chips. So I'm gonna add chocolate chips to the ones that I'm making. So um, that's our tools and our ingredients. So our mise en place, we have gone through that. But yeah, these granola bars are really easy to make. They're similar to the granola we made, if you guys remember, I don't know how many weeks ago that was, but we made granola. And now we're making granola bars, so it's a little bit stickier, but it's a lot of the same ingredients. And this is a great thing to make when you're really busy and you need to just grab something and eat it while you're, while you're doing your job or going on a walk. So it's, it's something I like to make a lot of and then have in the fridge. And I'm gonna share mine with Nessa and her husband because they're really busy right now with work and their kids and they need food that they can just grab and, and go because they don't have time to just sit down and eat so and I'm sure a lot of you guys are in similar boats so that's why we're making these granola bars today and hopefully they are delicious and I'm excited to hear what you decide to put in yours so before I get started cooking are there any questions I'm gonna look through and see if anyone has any questions. Okay, it looks like, oh, hi Zahara, it's good to see you. Hi, hi, hi Rhea. Hello, it's good to see you. Hi Ella, it's good to see you. Hi. Awesome. Okay, so everyone is muted right now. And I'm gonna get started with the cooking unless I see anyone has any questions. Sahara, you're good. Greta, good. Ella, you're just watching for right now, right? Not cooking along? Awesome. Cool. And great. Cool, so. First thing we're gonna do is wash our hands, which we always, is the first thing we do when we are about to cook. So I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'll put on my apron. I'm just trying to move my table over a little. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands for 20 seconds and I'll sing a song. Down by the bay, where the water down the road. Back to my home, I dare not go. Or if I do, my mother would say, have you ever seen a will with a book and down and two down by the bay? Okay, and now I'm putting on my apron to protect my clothing and stay nice and clean. All right, so I have on my apron and I have clean hands and I have my ingredients all in front of me. I have my tools in front of me and that means I am ready to start making my recipe. So the first thing we're going to do is grease our pan. And I was talking about this, I think, before some of you came on. Um, ideally, you're gonna have a square eight by eight pan, like what Issa is showing everybody. I don't have one of those at Golestan. Yeah, it looks like Massimo and Sandra have one too. 
I don't have one of those at Golestan, so I'm using this loaf pan. But whatever size pan you use, it will be fine. It just will change the thickness of your granola bars. If you have a big pan, they'll be really thin. If you have a small pan, they'll be really thick. But whatever you have is fine. And even if it's a circle, you can cut them into triangles instead of cutting them into squares. So I'm gonna use this pan and to grease it, I'm using coconut oil. And since I know my hands are nice and clean, I'm actually just gonna dip, dip my hand in and grab a little bit of how much, of my, how much olive oil should I put on it? Just a little, a little bit on your fingers. All right, Ella, I hear you, I see you. What's up, kiddo? Um, is this good? That looks great. I like that. That seems like a perfect size pan. But olive oil is, li um, is liquid. So if you are using olive oil, maybe you can just put it on a brush or something. You can brush it on instead of using your hands. Or you could just put, you could just drizzle a little bit on your hands and still rub it. You just might, it might be a little bit messy. Or it looks like your dad is just putting some parchment paper down and that will work just fine as well. So parchment paper, whatever What? Just put parchment paper? Yeah, parchment paper will work. And then no oil? No oil. You can skip the oil and just do the parchment paper. My parchment paper keeps coming up. That's okay. Once you um, put your granola down, it'll, it'll stay down. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> okay, I'm putting everyone on mute again, just so we don't have a lot of noise, but again, please wave to me if you have questions. So, alrighty. So now I have my pan greased, and if you just put a piece of parchment paper down, that works too. Just any way to get it to not stick will be fine. And now my hands are a little greasy, but I'm just going to kind of rub it in because coconut oil is good for the skin. And so, I have my pan greased, and we're going to get started measuring our dry ingredients. So our dry ingredients are any of the things that are dry, which means they're not wet. So we're going to take our medium bowl, and I'll start with our oats. So grab your old-fashioned or whatever oats you have. This is really going to be the base of your granola bars. And you're going to measure two and a quarter cups of oats. So you're going to find the one cup measure. It's going to say one C-U-P, one cup. You're going to scoop. And we've been talking about the way that we measure is that you scoop and then you take your hand or a knife and you level it off so that it's not heaping over the top and it's even with the top of your cup. So I'm putting in one cup and now I'm going in for my second cup. So I have two cups, second cup going in. And then I'm grabbing my one quarter cup and I'm going to go in with my one quarter cup which is one over four which should be the smallest that you have on your set of measuring cups and you're going to do the same thing so you just go in scoop it out level it off and put it into your bowl so now I am going to put the lid on my oats and put my oats to the side because I'm done with oats. Yep. Question, go ahead. Ella, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, I'm hitting unmute, but it's not working. Maybe can you unmute yourself? Thank you. We missed, Hi. we're a little behind. Are you going a little fast for us? How many cups of oats do we need? Oh, we need two and a quarter cup of oats. Two and a quarter, okay. Yep. We were still greasing. Okay, awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll pause for a second then. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. 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 Oh, I hear a cat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so we're pausing and we've got our oats in our bowl. And this might be a good time to think about what you want to mix in with your oats as far as nuts, seeds, or coconut. I think I'm going to use coconut and sunflower seeds. Okay. So we're going to move ahead with measuring our other dry ingredients. So as far as what you want to mix in, that's up to you. I would maybe choose a half a cup of coconut and a half a cup of another thing. You just want to have one cup of nuts, seeds, coconut, crisp, Rice Krispies cereal, some other kind of cereal, whatever you're mixing in. Can I use this? One cup. Yeah, you can use the cons. That looks great. Can I use um, one cup of this? Yeah, you can use one cup of that. That sounds delicious. Because I only have one nut. That's fine. One nut is perfect. One nut is totally perfect. So I'm going to use one half cup of coconut. Measure one half cup of coconut. And put that in. One half cup of And you can do what Issa's doing and, yep, so unmute yourself. Are you able to do that? I'm, I'm putting, I'm putting um, chocolate chips and almonds in mine. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put chocolate chips in mine, too. That sounds so good. Would you put the chocolate chips in now? I'm going to wait to put my chocolate chips in for an, uh, a little bit longer because... What we're going to do is we're going to heat our oil and our, our nut butter and our uh, maple syrup or honey. We're going to heat it. But if you added your chocolate chips already, then that's totally fine. But we're going to heat okay. things and then pour it into the bowl. And so what it might do if you already added your chocolate chips is melt your chocolate chips a little bit. But I've done that before, and it's really yummy, actually, because then you get chocolate all mixed into the granola bar. So you can add your chocolate chips now if you want your chocolate chips to melt and get incorporated into the granola bar more, or you can add them later if you want to wait and have them be more like whole chips. Does that make sense? Okay. So I have my mix-ins now. Add it, and I'm gonna put everyone on mute again. But oh, as always, just mute, unmute yourself, or have me, you know, wave in front of the screen. So now we've got one, two and a quarter cup of oats, and one cup of mix-ins, and we're going to add salt. So I am adding one half teaspoon of regular salt. So you're gonna look for the measuring spoon that says one over two teaspoons. And measure it, kind of level it off above your other salt and put it right in. Okay. And then I'm, use, I'm just gonna use my hands to mix it up. And you can do that too. If you want to use your spatula now, you can also use your spatula. Oh, I see Greta's using cereal. That's awesome. I love using cereal in mine. Really fun. So now what you're going to have is a bowl with oats and whatever your mix-ins are with a little bit of salt. And maybe your chocolate chips if you decided to add chocolate chips and you want to add them now. So just mix that up with your fingers and make sure it's incorporated all together. And then kind of wipe your fingers off and we can set that. We're just going to set our medium bowl aside for now and we're going to measure our 
wet ingredients. So those were our dry ingredients. We're starting with our wet ingredients, which we are going to measure into a saucepan because these ones we're gonna have to heat for a, like one minute over the stove. So let's start with the nut. Well, yeah, let's start with the nut butter. So if you're at home, you can use- Do I take, yep. do I take, do I take uh, my saucepan off the stove? Yes, you wanna take it off the stove so that we can bring it over where we're measuring. And then you can put it back on the stove after you've added your ingredients to it. So I'm at school, I don't use nuts at school in the kitchen here at home. Sometimes I've used peanut butter in this recipe. I've used almond butter in this recipe. I've used cashew butter. You can even use sesame seed butter, tahini, and that's really good. But sun butter is what I'm using. It looks like East is using peanut butter. And I'm not sure what other people are using. Maybe some peanut butter at Zahara's department too. I, I love peanut butter, good idea. And I'm not sure what Ella's using, but I'll get started measuring. This is what I buy at Golestan. This is a big bucket of sunflower seed butter. Look at it, there's so much in here. It's full of sun butter. Whoa, it's heavy. Okay, so we're adding three one quarter cups. So we're gonna take the same small one that we use for oats, the one quarter, and we're gonna fill this three separate times with whatever kind of butter. Yep, what's your question, Ella? Uh, my mom said that you're going too fast for us. You're going way too fast for us. Our kitchen's over there, we're in the dining room. I got my father playing in the mud, so okay. we're missing things. So okay. we're also- I, On the Corona, if you need the measurements, the Corona closure document also has the measurements there. If you want, maybe you can cross-reference if it's the measurements. Do you, um, I can slow down also, I'll slow down a little bit. And where are you right now, Ella? Uh, Salt. I think she, the last ingredient we put was salt, and then she was mixing everything up. Okay, then you're in the same place as us. You're good to go. I'm just measuring now. Nut, I'm using sunflower seed butter in this recipe, and I'm starting to measure that. Issa's is using peanut butter. Sahar is using peanut butter. So if you have any kind of sun butter, nut butter, Wait, how much butter. Cups? Okay, cashew butter is good. Yep. Okay. How much one quarter cups? You're going to do three times one quarter cup of whatever nut butter that you're using. Okay. Yeah, it's just that we don't, we can't cook in our kitchen because it's small. We don't have anywhere to put the laptop. So we're, mm -hmm. we're at the kitchen table in the other room. So we're just we're not in a professional kitchen right now so we just need a little more a little slow it down a little bit more for us okay. that would be great thank you okay so i am now measuring the nut butter so Whatever nut butter you're using, it looks like Issa's measuring his peanut butter. Sahara might be measuring peanut butter. We're just gonna take our one quarter cup measure. We're adding this not to our dry ingredients bowl, but to a saucepan. Whatever um, saucepan you're going to use. So we measured our dry ingredients already. We're setting that aside and we're measuring wet ingredients. So we're doing three one quarter cups of whatever nut butter you're using into a saucepan. So I'm just gonna get started. And measuring nut butter is hard to do. So this takes, takes a little bit of time. 
So I'm just stirring up the sun butter because some of the oil settled on top. And I'm filling my cup measure with nut butter. And then I'm just going to kind of knock it into my saucepan. So that was my first quarter cup. So I'm on my first quarter cup. And it's important to keep track of how many quarter cups you're doing because you want to make sure you only do three. Sometimes when I'm doing a recipe, I lose track. I have to forget and then I have to scoop everything out and remeasure it. So I'm on my second quarter cup now. And now I'm about to add my third quarter cup. Julia? Yep. Is enough peanut butter? Did you add three? One yeah, quarter cup? Yeah, that so It looks like maybe you only added two quarter cups. Is that uh, true? I can see two lumps in there. So maybe add a third. My spatula is too big to even scrape out inside my, my, my measuring cup. So I'm gonna grab a spoon and use the spoon to just scrape out whatever's in my measuring cup. Good enough for me. So I'm just going to set this aside because it's pretty messy. Stick it right into my sink. I'm going to put the lid right back onto my bin. Pocket of sun butter. Next, we're going to measure our honey or maple syrup. So I will wait a minute to see if people are ready for measuring honey or maple syrup. And when I see everyone's ready, then we'll start measuring. It's going to be one half cup of honey or maple syrup. I like to use maple syrup. I think it's yummy and it's also easy to measure, but I also want to change some. Oh yeah, it looks like Issa's got some maple syrup. Looks like honey over there at Massimo's. And I think... Is this the one half again? The one half. Yep, it looks like you have the one half. Yep. Okay, how much one halves? Only one? One one half. And I've also made this recipe with a little bit less honey or maple syrup, and that's fine if you're trying to use less sugar. So you're uh, just pouring one maple syrup. cup of honey. I've already done it. I have less than maple syrup. And adding it to your sun butter. Or a nut butter of whatever kind that what you have. Um, what's in the time? I don't know. I like one So I'm just going to mute everybody just because we got some noise happening. Awesome. So right now I have a saucepan, and in my saucepan I have three quarters cup, three one quarter cups of nut butter, and I have one half cup of maple syrup, but if you're at home, you might have honey instead of maple syrup. And next, I'm going 
going to add my coconut oil. Wait, do I use my olive oil? Yes. Okay, I'll use olive oil. You can use whatever oil works for you at your house. I've made this before with olive oil. I've made it before with sunflower seed oil or pumpkin seed oil. How much oil? We are adding two tablespoons. So you're gonna look for the biggest measuring spoon on your set of measuring spoons. And it's gonna say one tablespoon. And you're going to do two of those. And if you are using coconut oil, I'm just gonna measure mine, um, I'm gonna measure mine solid like this. So you just kind of scoop it almost like you're scooping ice cream and level it off. And I'm gonna do that two times so that I have two tablespoons. And you're kind of wanting to make sure it's even with I'm just using my finger to do that. And right into my saucepan. Because I got some coconut oil on my hands. Okay, so now we have in our saucepan, we have three quarters cup of nut butter. We have one half cup of any kind of sweetener like maple syrup. We have two tablespoons of oil. I have coconut oil. Some people are using olive oil. All totally fine. And then the last thing that we're, this is the last wet ingredient and it's optional, which is vanilla extract. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla to mine, but if you're at home and you don't have vanilla or you don't want to add vanilla, vanilla is optional. So you just look for the one teaspoon, which is gonna be probably your second largest on your measuring spoons. And find vanilla and just very carefully measure one teaspoon of vanilla. But again, vanilla is one of those things, it adds a nice, a nice extra flavor, but if you don't have it, you can always leave it out. I mean, not always. If you're making vanilla ice cream, I guess you don't want to leave it out. But, um, so now we have all of our wet ingredients into our saucepan, and what we want to do is put it over medium heat on the stove. So I'm gonna move my computer so you guys can see me on the stove. So if you're at home, this would be a time where your parents might wanna help you. And I'm just gonna go over some stove safety. Okay. So here's my stove at Golasan. One thing to remember when you're using a stove is you wanna have your handles of whatever you're cooking be kind of tucked in so that if you're walking past, you're not gonna knock it. So I make sure that my handles are kind of tucked into the stove and facing inward. And I also just make sure that you are aware that your handle might get hot, your pan might get hot. So if you're, use, if you're touching your pan or your handle, you wanna be using a hot pad. But as long as you're just carefully stirring with your spatula, your heat proof spatula, you want to be breaking up your nut butter. So the main goal here is to just 
cook everything until it's kind of melted together. Oops, I just spilled a little bit on the stove. So this, on my stove here, the medium heat's pretty hot, so I might turn mine down to low, but if you're at home, we're just gonna stir it over, you know, medium to low heat until we really don't see any clumps of coconut oil and we don't see any clumps of peanut butter. And mine now, I'll show you, does not have any clumps. It's kind of just like a uniform. Here, let me turn the screen down. Just a uniform mixture. And at this point, what I'm ready to do is actually turn the heat up for a second to more like medium high while you're stirring. And you want to bring this to a point where you're getting little bubbles on the edge. Because the little bubbles on the edge mean that the sugar is getting hot. And when the sugar gets hot, then when it starts to cool down, it will be more solid. So you're just gonna cook it now for another maybe 10 seconds over medium high heat until you see a few little bubbles and then turn it off. And again, I'm using my hot pan when I'm working with my stove. So I turned mine off and you just have a melted nut butter liquid thing. I'm sure that, however, because they're going in the refrigerator, they're gonna harden up no matter what. So don't worry too much about whether or not you heated it up enough. You just want everything melted so that it can incorporate. Um, what about this, the medium bowl? Now, Isa has pointed out, what about the medium bowl? You're so right, Isa. So now that you have your hot pad, you can have your parent or you can carefully together pour your melted, nut or your melted nut butter and honey over the stuff in your medium bowl. So you just scrape it out using your spatula and put it into your medium bowl. And Now I have, I just scraped it out really well. My saucepan is empty, it's warm. I'm gonna set it aside in the sink for safety. I'm gonna take off my hot pan now because I don't have a hot pan around me, but remember that the liquid you just put into your meat and bowl is hot, so you don't wanna mix it with your hands. You wanna mix it with your spatula. Yep. So now we're just going to use our spatula, we've got our liquid here, we've got our dry ingredients here, and we're just going to fold it, go around the edge of the bowl and fold it. And at this point, if you already added your chocolate chips, you might notice your chocolate chips melting, which is delicious if you're adding chocolate chips. If you haven't added any chocolate chips or you're not going to, then you're just gonna have a lot of peanut buttery or nut buttery goodness. Whatever nut when buttery. You add chocolate chip. You wanna add the chocolate chips now? But when? Oh, when? I'm gonna add mine in just a few seconds. Actually, you're way ahead of me. So mine now looks like that. It looks kind of similar to when we made granola a few weeks ago. Kind of wet, kind of sticky. And I'm gonna just... So at this point, 
if you're using chocolate chips, I would add them now. I'm going to add one half cup of chocolate chips, but this is optional. What? what? Oh, yeah. yeah. How hot does the oven need to be? Oh, these actually don't get baked. They just go in the refrigerator. Wait, yeah. one cup of one cup of chocolate chips? I'm going to use one. I'll probably actually use one third of can get frozen I was going to say one half, but our one half one, at least my one half one, is all covered in other sticky stuff. I'm going to use one third cup. Again, the chocolate chips are optional. You can use some you like to carefully transfer your mixture from your bowl to your pan. I mean, it's not going to be the entire bowl, I guess. It's not fragile or anything, but it's just depending on uh, if, you know, you want to make sure you don't spill a lot. So I'm going to just use my spatula, but you can also use your hands because I think mine's at least cool enough that it's not too hot to touch, or you can just take the bowl looks like Emma's doing that. You just take the bowl and turn it and it'll all kind of flop down into whatever pan you're using. And it's pretty sticky. At least mine's pretty sticky. So what I'm going to do is wash my hands off, but leave my hands wet. So my hands now have some granola stuff on them. I'm gonna wash them off. I'm gonna leave my hands wet, and then I'm gonna use my kind of wet hand to pat it down. Another trick you could, you hear muted. Sorry, I see oh, okay. the, yeah, what's up? I was gonna ask you, Um, if mine's not wet, did I put not enough of something, you think? Maybe, mm -hmm. what, do you know what you put in it? I did peanut butter and then I did some coconut oil and then honey. I did everything, but but it's more. Is it like this? Yours looks stickier though, right? Yours yeah, I mean, I think it'll all stick together. Okay. Does it seem like it's sticking together? It's a little bit loose. That's why I was wondering. But maybe when it gets cold, it um, maybe I didn't put enough um, butter, peanut butter. How much did you put? Do you remember? You I thought some? I put um. Three, oh, three, well, this would be three of the third. Three quarter cups. Three quarter cups. Okay, let me find my, let me see. I think it'll be fine. It doesn't matter. I'm sure it'll be good no matter what. I'm yeah. sure it's good. If it seems too dry, it could also be like granola. You yeah. Know? You use it like granola. Yep. My chocolate melting. That's fine. The chocolate melting is awesome. And what you can do if your chocolate melted, if you want to have chocolate chips still, is grab a few chocolate chips now after you've patted everything down because you're gonna I was kind of doing it while I was talking to you guys but I patted everything down with my hands until it was kind of flat and what you can do is you can just take some chocolate chips and just place them sprinkle them right on top and then you'll still have some chunks of chocolate if you want that does that make sense, Issa? Yeah. Is it saying that your chocolate chips melted? Okay. 
Okay. So now what I have is I have kind of this bar situation. You guys, sorry, my part in my hands. Greta, what's your question? Yep, okay, okay, let me unmute you one second. I'm trying to unmute, but for some reason it's not letting me unmute you. Hi. Hi, oh, you're leaving? You're done? Okay, bye, good to see you, miss you, bye. Um, is everyone at the point where theirs looks like this? Or do they have any questions? Ella, what's your question, kiddo? I don't know. Is is uh? Oh, she went all over your. Um. Is so is so anything else after we finish doing this? No. Okay. Yep. This is done. You finished it. All you do. Yep. Isa has his. That looks awesome. So Mine looks like this. And then what you do is you put it in the refrigerator. Oh, Ella, that looks so awesome. Good job. Good job. Laura, how's yours looking? You said all you have to do now. Awesome. That's all you have to do. And then you just put it in the refrigerator. And in about an hour or so, it'll probably harden up enough that you can cut them into whatever shape you want. Julia? Yes. Yeah. Can we read a story? Yes, I can read a story. I would love to read a story. So if anybody wants to stay and read a story, you can stay. If you don't want to stay and read a story, then that's totally fine. Can I lift the ball? I don't want you jumping. Me. Right, exactly. Let's get cozy. Sit down, get cozy. Did you open these? Well, the only books I have mm -hmm. in the kitchen the book right, yeah. are Duck Soup. How are you peeling? Cook a doodle do. And home. I think some of you have heard these stories before, but does anyone have a preference of which one you want to hear or one you might want to hear again? Sahara? Okay. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Cock-a-doodle-doo? Is that okay with everyone to listen to that? Julia? Yes. Um, should I put like a plastic thing over here? Yes. Yeah. If you want to put plastic over the top, I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so Zahara wants to hear cook a doodle do. And so if anybody wants to stay and listen to me read this again, then you can stay. If you don't, then you can say goodbye and that's okay too. So I'm let me just pull up my stool so I can read the story. Okay. So we've heard that we've read this one before, so don't nobody anyone who's heard it already, don't give away the ending, okay? Okay, so this book is called Cook a Doodle Doo. This is this book Nessa gave me. She said, I thought you might want to read this to the kids in the kitchen because it's kitchen related. And the first page, oh my gosh, that is a mess. That's kind of what my kitchen looks like right now. It looks like a big mess a little bit, but I'll clean it up. Okay, so. Here's the first picture. Here's a big chicken, and he says, Peck, peck, peck. Always chicken feed, day after day and year after year. I'm sick of it, squawked big brown rooster. Can we get something new to eat around here? Nobody's listening. What's a hungry rooster to do? Well, this hungry rooster wants something other than chicken feed to eat. He's tired of chicken feed. 
Rooster remembered a story his mama used to tell, a story handed down from chicken to chicken, the story of his famous great-grandmother, the Little Red Hen. Have any of you guys read The Little Red Hen before? Or heard that story, The Little Red Hen? No? Ella has? Yeah? Do you have a question, Ella, or you just want to share that you've heard the story? Okay. Okay, he looked high and low and he found his cookbook, The Joy of Cooking Alone. And he said, so many recipes. I want to make one of these. He is trying, he, the chicken wants to eat something than chicken, other than chicken feed. So he's going to cook himself some strawberry shortcake. That's it. I'll make the most wonderful strawberry shortcake in the whole wide world. No more chicken feed for me. Yes, sirree. Just like great granny, I'll be a cook. Cook a doodle doo crowed rooster as he pranced toward the big farmhouse. Does everyone want to do a cook a doodle do? I'll unmute you guys and we can all say it together. Cook a doodle do. Cook a doodle do. Cook a doodle do. Cook a doodle do. All right. Awesome. So, we heard he's going to, okay, so the rooster's going to start cooking the strawberry shortcake. Have you lost your marbles, said dog. You've never cooked anything before, said goose. That doesn't matter, replied rooster. Cooking is in my blood. It's a family tradition. Who's going to help me? He's asking if these guys will help him cook. And they all say, not me. I don't want to help you. No siree. Rooster pushed open the door and said, it looks like I'm on my own. But then he turned around and there stood his friends, the turtle, iguana, and a pot-bellied pig. And they said, I'll help you, Rooster. I can read recipes. I can get stuff, said the iguana. And I can taste, said the pig. The pig said, I'll be your special recipe taster, because that sounds yummy. So the, these guys are going to help him. Then we're a team, declared Rooster. Get ready and start cooking. Look at these guys. They're getting ready to start cooking. They're getting on there. He put, a, he put an oven mitt on his head. And he's got a saucepan on his head. They're so silly. Heat the oven to 450 degrees. That was the first step. Rooster put a big bowl on the table. What's our first ingredient? The recipe says we need flour, said Turtle. I can do that, cried Iguana. He dashed outside and grabbed a petunia and said, how's this flour? Is that the right kind of flour, guys? No. Is that the right kind of flour for cooking? No, that's just a, that's a flower from the garden that the iguana grabbed. He's silly. No, 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 said Rooster. Not that kind of flower. We need flour for cooking. Okay. And then they're saying, I think we need to sift the flour. Sifting the flour means we need to search through it. And Pig says, you mean like when I search through the garbage? And the iguana said, I'll, I can do it. And he dived into the flower and threw it everywhere. Oh my gosh. They're trying to help, but they're not being very helpful, are they, guys? All right, next step. Sorry, turn the page. No, 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 said Rooster. Don't sip the flower like that. You're making a mess. Okay, now we measure the flower. He's measuring the flower and he says, the flower is four inches tall. Is that how you measure flower, guys? No, <laughs> look at him measuring flower like that, saying it's four inches tall. That's not how you measure flower. How do you measure flower, guys? I'm gonna unmute you all. With cups and spoons. Yeah, yeah that's how you do it. Yeah, with cups and spoons. 
Good job. You guys are good cooks. Better than the iguana. No, no, no. We don't want to know how tall it is. We need to measure it with this measuring cup. Can I taste it now, said the pig. Not yet, pig, said turtle. Next week, you need to add one, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Hey, I can do that, said Iguana. He looked under the table and said, where are the tablespoons? Then he looked in the teapot and said, no teaspoons in here. Oh, he's being silly. Is that where you, is that what tablespoons are? Is that what teaspoons are? No, Ella says, no, that's not what they are. <laughs> no, 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 said Rooster. Don't look in the teapot or under the table. These spoons are for measuring. Each holds a certain amount. Okay, turtle, we need to add one stick of butter. I can do that, cried Iguana. He reached, he went outside and he broke off a branch and said, how's this stick? How's this stick? How does that work? Is that what, is that what he means when he says a stick of butter? <laughs> no, that's not what he means, guys. Okay. All righty. No, 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 said Rooster, not that kind of stick, a stick of butter. Okay, next we need to cut in the butter. He's cutting in the butter with scissors and he says, no, scissors, scissors don't cut butter very well. Don't cut the butter with scissors, use two knives like this. So they use two knives to cut the, cut the butter into the mixture. And the recipe says to beat one egg. Look at Iguana's like, I'll beat that egg for you. He's going to beat the egg with a baseball bat. Is that how you beat an egg, guys? <laughs> no, that's not how you beat an egg. Iguana, he's kind of silly. Don't eat it with a, or don't beat it with a baseball bat. Use an egg beater. And Pig says, that looks tasty. Let me taste it. Pig just wants to taste it. Not yet, pig. We need two thirds cup of milk. I can do that, said Iguana. Look, hold that glass measuring cup and I'll saw off some of it. No, 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 that's not how we do it. He wants to take his saw and saw the measuring cup in half so that they only add part of it. Is that how you measure stuff? No. It has marks on it. You, you pour the milk up to the mark, Rooster said. Now we mix the dough and put it in a greased baking pan. Oh, that's like what we just did with our granola. We put it in a greased baking pan. Yeah, good job, guys. And we bake it in the oven for 15 to 18 minutes. Ooh, they're gonna bake it. Iguana shoved the pan into the oven. Let's see, 15 minutes equals 900 seconds. So I'll count them. One, two, three, four, five. No, said Rooster. He, he said, I'll set a timer so that you don't have to count all of the seconds. So he set an oven timer. Pig burned his tongue trying to open the oven door to taste the shortcake. And Turtle studied the cookbook to see what to do next. Look at this big mess they're making. These guys are so silly. Let's cut up the strawberries and whip the cream. I cut up the strawberries and they whipped the cream. Like whip, whip, whip. Whipping the cream, whipping the cream. And Rooster grabbed the oven mitt out of Iguana's hand and Oh no, off of Iguana's head. And he took it off of his head and took the shortcake out of the oven. It smells so good, they said. Look at how pretty it is. They sliced it in half and they stacked layers of the cake with whipped cream and strawberries. It looked just like the picture of the strawberry shortcake in the cookbook. This is the most magnificent strawberry shortcake in the whole world, said Rooster. If only my great grandma could see me now. Let's take it to the table. 
I can do that, said Iguana. Uh-oh, what's gonna happen? He yanked at the plate. The shortcake tilted and slid and splat! Oh no, right onto the floor. All their hard work and it just fell right onto the floor. Bummer. And then Pig said, now it's my turn to taste it. And in a split second, all of the strawberry shortcake was gone because it disappeared into the belly of the pig. Our shortcake, cried Iguana, you ate it. I thought it was my turn and I was the taster, said the pig, it tasted great. And then, oh no, no, cried the rooster. We made the short team as a team and the team works together. You weren't supposed to eat it all, but Iguana dropped it. It doesn't matter, said the rooster. The first shortcake was just for practice and it won't be hard to make a second time. <gasps> they're gonna make it again. After they drop it on the floor, they're gonna start all over. So what are they gonna do? Together, they made the second most wonderful strawberry shortcake in the whole world. And it was a lot easier than the first time. They made it again. The end. Here's a recipe for strawberry shortcake. All right, that was cook a doodle doo. Does everybody want to say it with me one more time? Cook a doodle doo. Cook a doodle doo. Julia? Yeah. What's your question? Can we make strawberry Ooh, can we make strawberry shortcakes? That would be a fun idea. Maybe we can. I'll, I'll, I'll look into the recipes. Has anyone ever made it before? No. No, yeah, and I oh. can eat strawberry shortcake. You can't eat strawberry shortcake? Hmm. So maybe we should do something else that Ella can eat too. But we should, I, we should definitely make it. At some point, you can make it at home. That sounds really yummy. It's probably a lot of steps, right? I mean, we made scones. I think it's similar to the scone recipe that we made. Oh, that's true. The scones is pretty advanced. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> made scones. Good. Yeah. 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 It'd be fun. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. That'd be a cool idea. I like your idea, Zahara. Good thinking. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, does anyone have anything they want to say that they're before they say goodbye? Zahara, what do you want to add? Bye, Julia. We're gonna say goodbye. Bye, Zahara. Bye, Julia. See you Bye, later. Thanks for cooking with me. It was really fun. Ella, I was so glad to see you today. I'm sorry we were moving a little fast at first, but I'm really proud of what you did. That was awesome. Okay. Good job. And Issa, thanks for coming. And I'm excited to hear what people think about their granola bars. Let me know what you what you think when you taste it. Oh yeah, how long? Uh, I since mine's a little bit different looking. Hopefully, <laughs> but um, how long do you usually put it in there? Like half hour or something? Probably or? like a half hour or an hour. They'll be like solid enough to cut. Um, yeah. If you wait like four hours, they'll be really hard, and then like more easy to like pick up and take on their uh, own. Yeah. I wonder if I used r different oats than I was just thinking. I just oh, thought of. I used, I used old fashioned. Well, no, it was like the rolled oats, like from. Just like a, is that old fashioned roads? Or? I think that's what I use too. I don't yeah. know. It's so weird why mine didn't, I don't get it. I'm, so, I'm trying to think if I accidentally skipped something and I didn't realize it. Did you add honey or maple syrup? I added honey, but maybe I only, I added whatever I had left. So maybe it wasn't enough, you know? Cool. It's okay. It's going to taste good. I tasted it and it's just like, you just eat it like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It'll we'll be fine. It's Yummy. not a at all. Yeah. You could always bake it in the oven and make it like granola. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally, totally yeah. fine. Okay, cool. Okay. What did you add to yours, Ella? I didn't hear what you added to yours. Um, I added two different kinds of nuts. Yum. Do you remember what kind of nuts? Uh, um, I'll go see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Issa, you added chocolate chips and pecans. Issa's cool. a good cook. Yeah, Issa's a good cook. He does good, like good, Issa. Yeah, he does good. He's patient and he does it. Good quality. <laughs> did anyone try their pickles from last week? I did. Yeah, I did. My um, my cute, my carrots. They're so sour. Oh really? Ella, what kind of nuts did you add? Um, 
almond and another one, but I couldn't find the bag that they were in, so I couldn't find which one. That sounds really yummy, though. I love almonds. That sounds good. Yeah, the um, pickled uh, vegetables was really good. And then the fermented one, our salt was too, we used salt and salt. Oh, it was too salty. But Mike was like, I didn't taste it yet, but Mike said it tastes like the sea. So, <laughs> ocean, ocean yeah. worked out. But that's okay. It's all good. It's, it's all good experience, you know, stuff we wouldn't normally do. So. Okay. Bye, everybody. I'm going to end the meeting. I was so happy to see you, Ella, and good to see you, Isa, and good to see you, Massimo. I miss you guys. I that. What? I got a haircut today. Oh, my gosh. It looks so awesome. Fast. It's cut in my hair. <laughs> so fast. Who cut your hair? My mom. Awesome. I need a haircut. My hair's getting long. Bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Ella. I like your haircut. It was good to see you. Thanks. Bye.